Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to use this video to introduce what lunar liberation is and that's kind of a bit of a wobble that we see on the moon from Earth. So if we actually looked at the moon over some period of time it would appear to kind of rock back and forth and up and down as well. So you've got longitude and latitude liberation where it's kind of rocking back and forth. And this video is going to explain kind of why that actually occurs. And before we do that, if you do enjoy these videos and you find them useful, then do consider becoming a member. I have lots of videos in the member section that are not available publicly. And there's also lots of other benefits as well. So the first thing you're probably all aware of with regards to the moon is it's tidally locked. Now, if you don't know what that means, it means that the same face is always facing towards Earth as it orbits around the planet. So if we were to look at the moon, we always see the same face facing towards us. It means that it rotates once for every orbit it goes around the Earth. And we call that tidally locked. And that's a whole other video to explain how things end up tidally locked. But it is. So it rotates once for every orbit around the Earth, always faces the same way towards us. Now, this kind of liberation causes the view to change ever so slightly. And it causes a, like a rocking back and forth or up and down. There's actually a, there's a few different mechanisms that are actually occurring, but it causes a wobble of the moon. And we can see slightly different parts of it. So it's not always exactly the same face that's facing towards you. We can see slightly different bits. So if you actually are observing the moon with your own telescope and you want to see a bit of the moon that you can't normally see, then you need to do it in a specific part of its orbit where you can be able to see just beyond that. I'm going to explain why that actually occurs. So it does cause this wobble and there's two axes of motion or there's two main ones really. One of those is that it kind of vertically rocks back and forth and then one where it goes horizontally so longitude and latitude basically where it has this apparent wobble from where we're looking on earth essentially so the two main types are latitude liberation and longitude and we're going to cover which they are or and how they actually occur so the first one we're going to have a look at is the longitude one now this comes about due to the fact that the orbit is not circular it's slightly elliptical, and if you know anything about your Keplerian laws, then you'll know that for an elliptical orbit, the moon will not be orbiting with the same velocity in its orbit. When it gets closer to the Earth, so on its shortest part of its orbit, on the left-hand side here, it will actually orbit faster. When it's further away, it will orbit slower. Now, the thing is, the rotation, its spin, is not changing that much, but the orbit speed is and that's where this rocking motion actually originates from at this location here on its orbit it's at the pericenter which means that the two objects are closest the moon and the earth are at their closest position here now because it's closest the moon is orbiting faster it's actually ahead on its orbit compared to its rotation so the rotation lags its position on its orbit at this particular location here what does that mean? Well, it allows us to see slightly different parts of the moon. Because the, or the rotation is slightly lagged, it hasn't quite caught up with where it should be on its orbit. Remember, it's supposed to be tidally locked. It should always be rotating once for every orbital period. But on an elliptical orbit, it's not quite like that. Whilst if you do the average amount, so average-wise, it would work out about right. But because you're sampling at different parts on its orbit, it can be slightly ahead or behind. So this time round, we actually get to see a, a different part of the moon, which was previously hidden because it's kind of it's lagging. So we're actually getting to see a little bit further around the moon that we would do normally. Now on the other part here, which would be the upper center, this is the furthest part between the moon and the Earth. The moon is orbiting slower here. So what actually happens is the rotation leads the orbital position so actually it's rotated a little bit further around than it would have done normally because it's actually slower on its orbit this time around that allows us to see the opposite edge of the moon so this time around we can see 
the opposite side that was previously hidden. So that gives us our rocking motion. And as it moves back round to the pericenter again, it'll rock back and we can see the other side. And each orbital period, then we get this rocking in the longitudinal direction. So that's the longitudinal liberation. Now, the latitude one comes about due to its rotation axis. So the moon's rotation axis is not perfectly aligned or perpendicular to its orbital plane. It's slightly tilted, again, like Earth's is really. And because of that, as it goes around on its orbit, the polar regions or the, where the rotation axis is get illuminated slightly different. Well, not necessarily illuminated. What we can see from Earth, from Earth slightly change. So when it's tilted towards us and away from us, we can see more of the polar regions. And at each part of those orbits, again, we can see more of the north and more of the south. And it gives us that kind of latitude rocking this time around, as opposed to horizontally. Now, we actually get to see a combination of all of that together, but that's just broken down into, into the two axes. So it causes this overall sort of wobbling effect. So tilting away from us and towards us, we get to see more of those polar regions like that there. And overall, there's parts around the disk that we get to see that we wouldn't normally see because it causes that rocking. Now, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or queries or ideas for future videos, then leave them in the comments. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave up a video of the actual wobble of that moon over the full year. So I think this is for 2024, gives you the full lunar cycle, and it shows that liberation, that wobble of the moon for an entire year. So you actually get to see that as it's actually happening.